Maverick Traders. Welcome out to your currency recap. It's July 15th. Corey here with you. So we always take a look at broad equities. We look at currencies. We look at crypto. We're going to look at rotation of capital and ultimately with the goal of finding the very best setups possible. Our focus being in the crypto and Forex markets, of course. And we're going to look for strength and weakness, relative strength, relative weakness, and pairing those up. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional Forex and crypto traders. Maverick Currencies is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80% of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional Forex and currency trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. So today was kind of interesting because we came it, the aftermath of the attempted assassination of Trump. Uh, also today he announced his VP pick, J.D. Vance from Ohio. So some news related to the election and equities and crypto and all of those things really bounced back and surged nicely. Now Fed Chair Powell said we're not going to wait until inflation's all the way down to 2% to cut rates. That's another bullish element, another log on the fire. And then crypto bouncing back. And again, uh, election results, certainly most pundits believe that this improves Trump's odds of success and winning the next election. Uh, certain assets that tend to perform better with that presidency, crypto would fall in that basket. So that could have part of what was this big driving force to the upside. Now, as we look at currencies, certainly the Kiwi was the underperformer, but it was really all the commodity currencies. CAD, Aussie, Kiwi were the things in the red, everything else a bit more in the green. As we look at other markets, uh, the S&P was flat. That doesn't tell the whole story, though. The Russell 2000, the equal weight S&P really surged. So there were more stocks advancing than declining today. Crypto, big story, up five and a half percent, five and a quarter percent as a group. Uh, really big bounce back after what had been a trying time and certainly a downward trending market. So as you dig below the surface, Litecoin lagged, everything else up 5% plus. Now, if we look at our market outlook, again, the market just continues to chug on, and there's really not anything to dislike about the market. As we've pulled back, we've found buyers. As we've consolidated, we've broken out to the upside. We've kind of stalled a little bit in terms of momentum, but even if you were to call this a little bit of a high base, that's still a bullish price pattern. So until this market gives us some reason to believe that it's rolled over, right now it's just status quo. You don't want to overthink it too much. Just kind of go with the flow as we've been trying to do. If we look at the rest of this week and what's on tap, tomorrow we've got CPI here uh, out of Canada. So if you're uh, playing the Canadian dollar, certainly CPI is important. And then in the U.S., we've got retail sales. New Zealand has CPI at night. Then overnight, we've got CPI out of the U.K., employment data out of Australia, claimant count out of the U.K. on Thursday, the ECB meeting on Thursday, and then some retail sales to finish off in the UK and Canada. But this is it. This is the one, the ECB is the central bank meeting that everyone's going to be watching. That seems to be the big uh, potential mover for volatility. So as you're playing the euro, begin to watch that Thursday morning and target that time period for some volatility. As far as rates, they're expected to be left unchanged at four and a quarter percent. Now, as we look at analysis of the currency markets, here's how I would stack it up. Certainly, we're seeing big upside moves in crypto. If we dig below the surface in the FX markets, we've got the pound and the euro, which continue to outperform. We've got the US dollar and the Kiwi as underperformers. And I'm going to look at a couple of those charts here to kind of show you the strength and weakness and where some pivotal spots might be. So let's start with crypto. Here's Bitcoin. 
Bitcoin had been trending lower. Uh, it actually had some support back here and kind of a, this was the handle of a cup and handle that we had talked about. And it traded perfectly. It went up to 63,000. That was a short scenario. Plunged down here to 54,000 before it bottomed. But that was just a trade. That's just a trade setup. And that trade has come and gone. Now, fast forward, we had a basing formation here, which one would have expected it more likely to go down than up, but it didn't do that. It broke out of the base to the upside, and we further continued this week. So, so much so that we crossed above and closed above the 50 period moving average in Bitcoin. Crypto, I don't know that I would say it's back, but it certainly is not something I would short immediately. I would, I would kind of stand aside, or I would be looking at this as a possible candidate for buying. Now, I don't love, my personal opinion is, not to trade breakouts in trend reversal. So I don't love buying a lot of upward momentum when you have all of this overhead supply. You have all this resistance, right? People that bought Bitcoin here and here and here and here, and these are disgruntled former buyers because they bought it higher. So as you try to rally you find sellers back here that want their money back. And that keeps a lid on things. So if you want to buy it, the way I would play it is wait for the pullback. You get a pullback, doesn't have a lot of strength, doesn't have a lot of momentum, then I would look to buy the dip. If we look at the British pound, here's one that does not have resistance. So this is one where you can just play the momentum. We don't have overhead supply. It broke out, and sure enough, it continues to go. So watch the difference. The same way that the British pound here has surged, and pound sterling has just been a wonderful for performer, if you look at Bitcoin here in the next few days, I'll bet you it gets choppy. I'll bet you some of that old supply comes back into the market and so on. It won't be clear skies ahead because you're not at new highs, you're not up above all the resistance, and that's the issue for crypto. Last but not least, let's look at the US dollar chart. And just as we had highlighted a week or so ago, that bearish setup in crypto, you have something similar happening in the US dollar. An inverse cup and handle, you have the support, you have the retest, and now you're getting the bounce. And this inverse cup and handle is basically, here's the big cup and then the shallow handle. And so if we're looking at the math on this, we say, okay, resistance up here is at about 1.254. Support down here was at about 1.232. The difference between those two numbers is the size of the cup, and we need to do the math on that. So 54 minus 32, you've got a 22, a 0 0.022 size base in this US dollar grouping. So as we look at that, we say, okay, well, the difference between that and that is that, that that's the size of this. 30% of that number is what this handle should be. So if you take the size of the cup, which again, resistance up there at 1.254 minus support at 1.232. The difference is 0 0.022. We times that by 0 0.3 and it's 0 0.006. So as you bounce off of 1.232, you go up about 0 0.06. That puts you at about 1.238. And that's exactly where we've bounced up to and should start to fall over and go back down through that support to the support first and then through the support. So we're just looking at this technically, just looking at where's the trend, where's the momentum. Yeah, it's bouncing off support, but I wouldn't expect, see most people look at it and go, well, couldn't it be a double bottom? It could, but most of the time it's not. Double bottoms and double tops are the exception, not the rule. So I'd expect a minor bounce, and that's exactly what we've got now to the U.S. dollar. I think the U.S. dollar is a great-looking short here in the near term. So for me, 
I'm looking to get short the US dollar obviously against the pound or the euro are obvious candidates but virtually about almost against almost anything I think the US dollar should have a sustained move lower over the next week or two that's one that I can kind of I don't know if pound the table is the right term but I suspect we'll look back next week we'll review the US dollar and I would anticipate it will be lower than where it is here versus virtually every other currency. Hope you enjoyed today's currency recap. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you next time.